Hello, mamas. I have excellent news, an amazing announcement to share with you. Memes are back. They are back, baby! For so long, due to the TikTokification, let's call it, of the internet, it felt like there was no beating center, no beating heart of the internet where we could all dance around and laugh at the meme of the moment, okay? Everyone was pushed into their own little bubbles of content, their own little for you pages, which very much still is the case, but it, it really feels like something has shifted, something has changed in society that we finally have it back. And I'm talking like, like back to like the 2016 to like 2018 vibes, okay? When there was Vine, when there would be like one popular Vine, like a week basically that everyone would know and everyone would reference for the most part, um, or like popular tweets. And then you know, I, I say it ended in 2018 because that's kind of when TikTok started and everyone moved away from these like centralized platforms where, you know, it'd be everyone would see the same stuff. It'd be like a like Instagram literally used to have a popular page where like it would be the most like pictures would be on the popular page, which obviously isn't the best idea. Like like celebrities like Selena Gomez or someone is probably would always be at the top of that. So not the best idea, but there was something to be said. There was something to be said about the internet being like a town square where we could all gather around and like laugh at the same goofy little thing. And that's why I was truly genuinely upset when TikTok absolutely just demolished that. Now that's not to say that you know, the birth of TikTok didn't spawn very funny memes, and I'm very thankful for their existence, but it, it, it oh, that, sorry, I, like, when I was pushing out a word there, I actually sounded like I was shitting myself, um, I just, I just wish that, you know, we could have, like, a For You page on our TikTok account, but as well as, like, a popular page, or, you know, just, like, the funniest videos of the week, I don't know, but using that as a prelude to what I want to talk about today specifically the memes that have captivated the world in like a way that no other meme has in a very, very long time are the Grimace Shake and the Titanic Submarine, which are two very different, two very different events, um, but had have had like a similar effect on the internet, okay? Like literally everyone, everyone knows about the Grimace Shakes, and everyone knows about the Submersible. Like, in fact, my mom, like, literally asked if I got a Grimace Shake when I called her an hour ago, and I was like, how? How do you know that? Because, A, she lives in Canada, and they don't have the Grimace Shake in Canada. Like, it's that it's that international. Grimace is so worldwide. It, it's so impactful. Um, so starting with the Grimace Shake, uh, yes, I have had it. I have tried the Grimace Shake. It is disgusting. Um, to 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 really just describe it for you, uh, it tastes like the color purple. Okay, you might look at it and think it's a, it's a like a lavender purple milkshake, and you might think, okay, well that's grape flavor. The thing is, it's not. It's not really any flavor. It's like sweet purple, and I I can't give any other explanation other than that. And there's some like lore on why it exists, because it's the most random fucking thing, like, obviously, we're not, like, there's, like, food collabs, and, like, um, like, food linked to popular culture, say, like, the Travis Scott meal, the BTS burger, the Jack Harlow KFC meal, those, like, really have taken over in the past few years, okay, there's nothing new about them, but they were all, like, a little bit cheesy, without, like, any, like, kind of sense of like, it, they weren't, like, ironic, so it was, like, stupid. Like, if if it was, like, the Travis Scott meal, blah, 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 and, like, they made, like, a whole, like, joke out of it, that could be, like, more fun. But the way it was, like, so serious, like, Travis Scott made, like, a fucking super cut of, like, his career, and he's, like, and now we made it to McDonald's or some shit like that. Like, that's embarrassing. Like, that's not... And it's the way it's, like, not even anything special, it would just be, like, a few nuggets and, like, a burger. Like, come on now. But the Grimace Shake is a brand new invention this shit has never existed before and for the most random the most random piece of like the most random character like who the fuck is grimace 
I didn't know who Grimace was. I, I mean, I've seen Grimace with like all the McDonald's people, um, the McDonald's characters, but like, I you will not see me being like, oh boy, when is Grimace gonna be in the MCU? Oh boy, I can't wait to see a Grimace movie. Um, please, Netflix, make a Grimace TV show. Like, no one was asking for it. No one fucking wanted it. And yet, it was the funniest thing ever. So, I don't know, like, how much McDonald's predicted what would happen. But, you know, it's obviously a very random thing um, to just make a purple shake. But it's the way that the meme was, like, proliferated is batshit crazy. So, there was this one girl who, like, posted... Uh, the first Grimace Shake TikTok, which was, she's like, hey guys, I'm trying the Grimace Shake. Happy birthday, Grimace. And then she like takes a sip and then like her neck is like breaking. Like it's just like, it's like an instant cut, like a horror movie fucking jump scare to her on the ground, like neck breaking, like jaw dislocating. She's like, Ugh. and boom, all of a sudden a, a tornado, a hurricane of Grimace TikToks showed up. Um, and I don't want to get, like, too, like, marketing strategy into this because I really don't care that much about it. I'm more focused on, like, how bonkers it is that this became what it was. So, it, like, it's literally all those on my For You page. I actually, I think it's funny. I don't think it's that funny anymore just because I've seen so much of it. But, like, I opened my For You page and it was six Grimace videos in a row. And... It's not, like, the kind of trend where it's just, like, creators, like, like random TikTokers that, like, have no actual, like, content and just hop on every trend, like, making videos on it. It was, like, everyone. I saw, like, old ladies making Grimace TikToks. I saw, like, the, like, so, like random people that live in, like, the middle of Nebraska making Grimace TikToks. It truly was, like, we were coming together as a society to laugh at the hilarity of Grimace TikToks and, like... It's it, it's such an awesome freaking trend because, like, it's so creative and it's it's you know every trend on TikTok for the most part has been like very kind of like brain dead if you will like it that, that's the nature of trends like anyone can do them anyone can like pick it up if you like spend fifteen minutes like to learn how to do a dance or something or just like download an app for like a filter like every trend is like so low barrier of entry. Um, but this one also is, like, a very low barrier venture. Like, obviously, anyone can just, like, throw a Grimace shake on the ground and be like, like, the Grimace shake killed me. But, like, people were getting fucking creative with this, which you never really see with trends online, okay? People were, like, directing entire A24 horror movies about the damn Grimace shake, which is so bonkers. And I will say, I fucking hate McDonald's. <laughs> like, I genuinely... I, I, I've had McDonald's, like, maybe six times in the past, like, ten years. I hate it so much. Um, the main reason why is because I'm bitter, because they don't have, like, any meat-free options. Like, literally everything at McDonald's is meat, which is just beyond annoying. Um, except for when I went to London, and they had Beyond Meat Big Macs, which was really good, actually. And I was like, wait, and I started completely changing my entire mind about McDonald's. But for the most part, fuck McDonald's because they don't have anything I can eat there. Like I pull up, same with Wendy's. Wendy's, you big fat nasty hoe. Like actually, can you like make something other than a baked fucking potato for like people that don't eat meat? Like be real. Are you Arby's? Do you think you're Arby's and you have the fucking meats? Because you don't. You're Wendy's. You have some nasty little pigtails and all you serve is meat. It sucks. And you suck, Wendy. Um, like, that I wish like fast food restaurants. Sorry to take a tangent, but I wish fast food restaurants could like understand that like you literally just need one one impossible burger on the menu, and boom, I love you. Like I love you so much. The way I eat fucking Burger King, I am a Burger King consumer. I will order Burger King here and there because they have a Beyond Meat burger, and it's good. And Burger King's nasty. Like that is, anyways. So I've always hated McDonald's for that. And also because, like, it is just so overhyped. Like, I I've have had, like, a Big Mac before. I have had chicken nuggets before. Or, sorry, McNuggets. Um, because, like, I've had, like, periods in my life where I, like, ate meat for a little bit. I'm like, mm, let me try McDonald's. Fucking gross. Nasty. It, it is so overhyped. It literally tastes like if you just, like, it tastes like styrofoam. Like, genuinely tastes like <coughs> styrofoam. I'm really feeling sick thinking about it. So, I've always just hated McDonald's. And when the Grimace Shake 
first came up, I didn't even want to interact. I didn't even want to like vaguely participate in it because I was like, I hate this company. I hate this brand and y'all suck. But I was pleasantly surprised. It was nice to see that, you know, I feel like McDonald's is such a boring ass restaurant that like never does anything fun other than like a Travis Scott meal or a BTS burger, which is not even really fun for me because I don't give a fuck and I can't eat it. But it was nice to see such a like absolutely camp, goofy, like creation um, that's spread in such a wholesome way with so much creativity. Um, and I'm typically like really just grossed out when brands will like tweet as if they're like your best friend or like silly little meme lord running McDonald's account. Um, so that was, like, a little annoying. Like, they would, like, change their, like, profile picture to Grimace. Like, hey, guys, Grimace here. Grimace running the McDonald's Twitter. Shut the fuck up. You're, like, a, 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 an unpaid intern at McDonald's who deserves a job for literally running the McDonald's t- Twitter account. Um, ew, sorry. I just, ugh, I hate, I fucking hate when brands, like, <laughs> act like <laughs> little humans. I mean, they are humans, like, running that. But it's, like, I, uh, Wendy's Burgers. I am Wendy. Like, shut up. Shut the fuck up. So that's kind of my two cents on the Grimace thing. To take a full, um, <laughs> a full like 180 onto the Titanic submersible, you know, it feels a little callous, feels a little weird to call it a meme, but it's obviously a fucking meme. And the memes that were proliferated from this event, sorry, I'm using that word so much in this podcast, like, like, oh, look at me with my $10 word. Shut up. Um, the the ocean gate memes were insane and it was it was a crazy feeling because like when this submersible if you don't know there was a submersible that went to go explore the titanic ruins i was carrying like five people on board that were all very very rich and oh wait i literally talked about this in my last episode so if you i'm not freaking recapping it because real drama mamas listen every week on wednesday um but anyways the memes that came from it were like bonkers like i saw one it was like me when i'm stuck in the submersible and i tweet fuck Nicki minaj so that they come and find me like it was and there was like multiple different phases to it okay there was the first phase where it just went missing um and details started to pour in about like how poorly made this thing was how it was like controlled by like a logitech game controller um how like the owner of it said he safety is like a a stupid like road bump to like ignore um there was that phase and then there was the phase when like we realized damn like it fucking imploded and they are literally all dead like that was another phase and at both phases in the ocean gate moment um there the memes did not stop the memes memes literally did not stop obviously it's very tragic i'm not like i know i said a little piece which a lot of people in the comments didn't agree with because i said i have i'm having a hard time like generating empathy for them but at the same time they knew exactly what they were getting into and they knew exactly the risks and you exactly just don't need to go down there so um sorry like i i sorry if y'all think i'm fucking evil now but i'd like i actually physically can't like generated it in my brain to feel to have so anyways moving on from that um it was crazy because like on one hand like yes these are like literal people that are like at the bottom of the ocean and people are like making like Nicki Minaj jokes but what I want to focus on is like how we haven't had like an event or a moment like that where we all came together in like awe and spectacle for one thing like the last the genuinely the last time i saw like twitter so hyper focused on one thing was like the dream face reveal like that is genuinely the last time um so it it it, it really feels like we're in this like renaissance where like because i think most people enjoy and find a lot of community and warmth in having like memes that everyone has seen and everyone knows it is such a a genuine like wholesome human experience to have that i think and it's finally fucking back baby i think there's 
like been like it, like there's been smaller events that everyone kind of gathered around that were like leading up to these like giant memes like for example there's like all the barbie memes about the barbie movie coming out and this like also feels a little weird like it's kind of similar to the grimace situation the grimace incident the grimace allegations um because like the barbie movie obviously a lot of the memes are like generated by like the movie company and the advertising executives like it's not like some little wholesome thing that just like came out of nowhere for the most part like also just to take a sidebar it is so insane like the marketing for this barbie movie that's coming out they built an entire malibu barbie dream house in malibu that you can book on airbnb there's like barbie freaking roller skates um there'll probably be a barbie meal honestly um and I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very excited. I love the director of Barbie. She did Little Women. She was in the movie Francis Ha. Um, very amazing director. So I'm very, I, I, I don't have any doubts that this movie won't be good. But there's also memes being like, because there's another movie coming out the same day called Oppenheimer, which is really about like the man that created the nuclear bomb. And so there's this whole kind of like thing being like, we have Barbie movie at 11 a.m. We go take shots. We see Oppenheimer at 6 p.m. Like type B. And it, it was like funny because they're two like polar opposite movies. And I think that was kind of natural. Like this trend to be like Barbie Oppenheimer movie night. Um, So that was fun. Another kind of less of a meme because it was more of like an actual fucking natural disaster. But the fires... Bro, the fires in Canada that, like, pushed smoke into New York, there was a lot of memes about that, too, that, like, I I actually don't know. I'm, like, realizing as I'm saying these that, like, a lot of these are kind of, like, manufactured or, like, not, they're not memes that just, like, came from any kind of organic way. Like, these, like, obviously the fire, like, all the memes about, like, the fire and the smoke in New York like, happened because of the smoke, like, it's not like one person was like, hey, let's put some smoke in this guy, like, the only kind of memes that are coming organically from, like, the four things I've mentioned, I think is probably, like, the the Ocean Gate situation, because that, like, genuinely, like, no one, no, there was no company pushing behind that, I guess what I'm saying, or, but I remember seeing, like, for the, the New York fires, like, someone... <laughs> Someone made this, like, uh, Instagram create mode, and it was, like, a picture of this guy, and it was, like, how can I make this about me? And I've seen that, like, ever since it happened. Like, when the Ocean Gate thing happened, they like, I saw this post, and it was, like, the submersible, and someone was, like, how can I make this about me? So, anyways, these, like, it really does feel like a meme renaissance, and I might be crazy. I might be sitting here as the only one, like, thinking that, because maybe I, I'm also just not that, like tapped into like the pulse of tiktok i'll fully miss like entire trends and memes because i have a 30 minute screen time limit on my phone for tiktok and uh, literally genuinely only my mom knows my password so there's no fucking override like if i hit my 30 minutes i'm done baby but i don't think that i missed anything because like my experience with tiktok in the past three years has been like an insane bubble like I was oh my god I was showing my friends Jazzy and Koi and Keegan my for you page yesterday and it was literally just all train videos because that's what fucking TikTok gives me and, and I'm not complaining like I love a good train video I love videos about infrastructure and bridges and like countries and like passport collectors like very just kind of like geeky shit like that I love but that means that I'm not seeing like the more kind of trendy things like I had no clue who Alex Earl was who's like apparently the freaking it girl of tiktok and like actually like taking over social media no clue who that was because i'm in this little bubble and on one hand i like seeing stuff that i like am really interested in but i do feel very left out when i'm missing entire like trends and waves and moments in culture because i'm getting fucking train videos i'm like learning about how like the brooklyn the the train going through Brooklyn to New York is not good and it's a freaking light rail. Like I want it I want to know that but I also want to know about Grimace. I want to know about Ocean Gate. So it's a weird place because I I genuinely do feel like there's a hunger for like <coughs> us all being together and holding hands and joining together in the funniness of singular memes versus a bajillion separate experiences 
Um, I don't. I think it's more fun in having like a giant community like that versus like a bunch of small little communities. I don't know. It's like it's really weird because like obviously TikTok has brought together like some very niche communities. Um, say like you like a band that has like literally a thousand listeners on Spotify, you can probably find like TikToks about it which by the way is very fucking weird because like the way you can literally google something and get a tiktok for it five minutes later w- cookies whatever they are like every time i go to a website I'm like we use your cookies They're like hey there we're just a little website and we'd like to use your cookies can we have some cookies please i'm like oh let me give you some cookies and then they just steal all my fucking data and like literally tailor my entire for you page to what i googled in the past 10 minutes like what products can we sell what can we give to him that's a little scary. Um, but <laughs> I, I, what, what I think has, like, also helped for, like, don't worry. My stool is just absolutely shattering underneath my feet. Under my big fat ass. Um, what I think has really helped bring back this meme renaissance, ironically, is, like, the worst social media platform. Like, Twitter. Like, if Twitter actually fully died, I don't know that... We would have Grimace Shakes. I don't know that we would have Ocean Gate memes, okay? Things on TikTok can, like, like trends like the Grimace Shake and trends like the Ocean Gate uh, fiasco, those typically, like, literally start on Twitter first. And then, like, some content-hungry person on TikTok will, like, make a video on it. It's very rare that stuff starts on TikTok and moves its way to Twitter, I think, for the most part. I'm, I don't know. Y'all might disagree, but... um. And, and I guess, like, also, like, YouTube um, has a trending page, too. Although, I don't know that that is, like, as, like, I don't know if, like, that is, like, starting trends as much. But I, I do love the trending page because, like, whenever I'm, like, what is society watching right now? Like, what are y'all up to? I can just go to the YouTube trending page and see. I don't have to scroll through TikTok for a million fucking years and then, like, make cross, like, correlations thinking oh wait this is really popular um this has four million likes it must be uh, a trend and then i have to like look it up and like cross reference with other people be like did you see this oh okay yeah this is a trend like that's fucking annoying i just want to know what is funny right now and i i feel like i made an episode like a a few months ago being like i hate popular things and i want to be in my own lane um and like fuck marvel marvel movies but there is something to be said about being in the general the being amongst society as we laugh at funny silly little things like people drinking a nasty fucking purple milkshake and throwing it up and recording it as if they died or a submarine that is lost in the most crazy fucking way um with (laughs) with the literal titanic death count going up by five that's crazy um with the wildfires making new york look like the sky is made of spray chase with the barbie movie coming out the same day as oppenheimer two completely separate movies but somehow having the same audience these are human experiences that are timeless they may not make it in history books but you look back at pre-2018 and these were tent poles of the culture. We had the, the the killer clowns of Halloween. What a fucking time to be alive. A meme that like transcended social media because people were genuinely seeing clowns like out and about and thinking they were about to get murdered. Shit like that is what makes it, it is all like genuinely all I use social media for. I don't care really about all the happenings in between. It is just so fun. Like, I think about, like, when I was a kid and I'd, like, wake up and I saw the Hurricane Tortilla Vine for the first time. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We we won't be able to, like, all have, like, a, a, a little connection together with each other if we're all just in our own little bubbles on TikTok seeing a super hyper niche content i i truly do think like tiktok needs a trending tab or something um sorry i just got so sentimental there but i truly do love having a good laugh with the whole world um but anyways 
that's the meat and potatoes. Let's get into your guys' drama. If you want me to read your drama in a future episode of Drama Mama, just comment it. Just leave a little comment down below on the YouTube video version of this podcast, and I will read it. Please keep it like one or two sentences. Some of y'all are venting. I love you, but I'm not a therapist. Um, but I will give my two cents. Uh, this comes from at Exer Campbell Bellenjoyer. There's a long, a bunch of words ran together and I didn't know how to pronounce it. Um, hey, Ben, I love you and your content so much. Here's my drama. Hi, love you. One of my lifelong best friends is now dating this guy who bullies and harasses me and but mainly my girlfriend. They know he does this too. I'm so torn over what to do about it, though. Should I confront her, let it slide, stop being friends with her, etc.? Please give me advice. Yeah, definitely confront. I would not let that go. Um, Some people, like, get so blinded by, like, love and their attraction to someone that they will just, like, completely ignore the red flags of their partner, um, especially when it comes to how they, like, interface and interact with, like, other people. And that is very fucked up that they're doing it to you and your girlfriend. Like, uh uh-uh. Definitely have, like, a one-on-one conversation with your friend um, because, like, they they genuinely might not know. They might, like, like think, oh, (laughs) Bob is being so silly. (laughs) But, like, it's actually, like, hurting and affecting you. Uh, Call them out. And if they're, like, blind to it, let this is so cringe. I've always wanted to do this. But, like, literally just, like, record them doing it. Or, like, call them out, like, next time they're rude. Or, like, say they, like, send, like, a rude-ass text or something. Screenshot that shit. I don't know. Just, like, get proof so that, like, from an objective point of view, you can just be like, look. Look at this asshole being rude. And this is your boyfriend? This is this is who you are kissing and smooching on? Uh-uh. And hopefully that works. Um, I love y'all. I will see you next Wednesday. I'm sorry that this was um, not the live podcast episode. I'm still waiting on the files for that. Um, I had a really fun live podcast at VidCon. Thank you all so much for coming. If you listen to this podcast, it was a blast. And the video version will be uh, up here some one of the Wednesdays. One of the Wednesdays when I get it. Um, but please have a good rest of your Wednesday and I'll, I'll see you later. Bye.